Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Pastor Edward Tentongo. You're welcome to today's uh, yet session of our Bible study as we continue our series. Um, um, today we are going to talk about uh, the, re uh, the return of the Lord continued, uh, but the, the bride, who, who, in the return of the Lord, Christ is coming back for a bride, and that bride must be purified, pure and holy, because according to what God is Second Peter 3 verse 14, he says he's coming back for a holy and unblemished church. You and I must be unblemished. In other words, we must be pure and holy, even he who has called us is pure and holy. Let's start with First Peter chapter 1 verse 16. If you have your Bibles, will you please open your Bible in First Peter chapter 1 verse, let's start with uh, verse 15. But before we begin, I'm going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. I hold and glorify you, Lord my God. I thank you for each and every one that is listening at the sound of my voice. And I pray that uh, each and every one of us are blessed uh, with today's word that we're going to share, uh, that we are blessed by your presence, the presence of the Spirit of the living God. For the word of God is living. It is uh, sharper than any double-edged sword. It separates soul from spirit, born from marrow thoughts from intents of the heart. Let your word work as an imperishable seed, the living word of God, my Lord, my God, bringing life to each and every one of us, our hearts, our souls, the innermost being, for you say, Lord, my God, according to the word of God in John 7, verse 38, my Lord, my God, that whoever believes in him out of our innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that Whoever is listening who is not yet born again, they become born again because it is through belief in Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior that they will bring this word to come to life in their hearts. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. And I come before your mercy seat and ask you for the forgiveness of our sins. Anything you say down or thought that does not glorify your name, Lord, we pray that you forgive each and every one of us. In the mighty name of Jesus, not everybody say, Amen. May God bless you abundantly. Holy Spirit, have your way. I'm just but a vessel, but a vessel filled with the power of God. In my weakness, I can do nothing. But in the power of the Most High God, through His Spirit, who will receive as a gift, having accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, we prevail. For those that are led by the Spirit of the living God are the children of God. May God bless you abundantly. Father, I thank you. I thank you for everybody that's listening, and I pray that you touch each and every one of their hearts. I pray that you approve anything that is not of God in their hearts, even as you approve everything that is not of God in my heart, even as I speak in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody say, Amen. So we say that um, uh, Christ is coming back. He's coming back soon. Uh, the world of last week, we studied uh, the return of the Lord, of the Lord, and we shared scripture that uh, speaks to that truth that he's returning very soon and that he's coming back for a holy and unblemished church. Now, does that mean that, um, that we're not going to go through tough situation. As a matter of fact, he says everybody that is uh, the ones who follow him, they must be ready to carry their cross. They must be ready to lay down their lives for others. They must crucify their flesh. They must be ready to submit their bodies as a living sacrifice, all in accept of the Lord, and not to be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind. In other words, you submit everything that belongs to you, yourself, Praise the Son of Living God. And that is how you make it to the next life, the afterlife. That's how you are going to be holy, by submitting your heart to Christ first, and then you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, who he promised, I will not leave you as often, but I will leave you a comforter, a counselor, who then purifies us. Praise God. Now, God himself is holy. Of course, he's pure and holy. Praise God. And he desires that we are holy. That's why he's coming back for a holy and unblemished church. And so today's teaching is going to concentrate on his bride. And, 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 and there's so many good things. Yesterday we learned about the, the place, the, 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 the hope of, of those that make it through this world, through this uh, evil and perverse generation, the place that God has prepared for each and every one of us. The new Jerusalem, the, 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 the new heaven and earth, in which heaven and earth will be one. One in the sense that we'll be with our God and God will be with us. He will be, our God will be his people. Praise the Son of living God. The temple, the new Jerusalem, in which we will be under the covering of the Most High God, under the covering of the glory of God. And the enemy does not want that message to come out. But I'm here to tell you, brother, sister, if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, please do, because that is the hope 
of believers. Praise the Son of the living God. I'm going to start with First Peter chapter 1, verse 16, uh, 15 to 16. I think that's what we say. Here is um, uh, what it says. It says, For this is the will of God, that by doing good you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Praise God. First Peter chapter 1, verse 15. Praise God. First Peter, what am I reading from First Peter? Wait a minute. Yes, First Peter 1, 1 verse uh, uh, 15. I was reading Second Peter, uh, First Peter chapter 2. Sorry about that. So First Peter chapter 1 verse 15. That's where I want it to be. But as he who called you is holy, praise God, you also be holy in all your conduct. Listen to those words. Those words are very powerful. It says, but as he who called you is holy, Christ who has called us is holy. It's pure and holy. In fact, in heaven, the angels, the angels worship. 24 older, uh, elders surround his throne, the throne of God. Praise God. And the angels, the throne of God, our Father, and the thr throne of uh, uh, the Lamb of God, which is right on the right hand of our Father in heaven. Praise God. So the angels worship on a daily basis. They say, holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Praise the Son of living God. Honor and glory belong to you. Praise the Son of living God. And so he is holy. He's pure and holy. Praise God. When Christ came down here on earth, praise the Son of the living God. When he came down here on earth, he did not have any blemish. In fact, when he lived in, on this earth, throughout his time, from childhood to adulthood, he never sinned. Praise God. And you may not believe it, but he never sinned. He was sinless. Scripture says, he who was sinless took on our sin that we may be sinless. He had to be pure and holy in order for us to, uh, to, for him to be paid as a sacrifice for each and every one of us, to be paid as a price. In other words, his death as a sacrifice for the forgiveness of all our sins. Similar to, um, well, not, not exactly the same, but similar to the Old Testament for those uh, uh, Israelites, praise God, who lived in that time. And some of them are still living in that uh, law of Moses, but it has long since been, and we're going to share scripture to that effect, since been, um, uh, uh, it's obsolete. The, the law, according to Moses, is obsolete. Now we're living under the new covenant. The old covenant is obsolete. Praise God. The new covenant, sealed by the blood of Jesus, is what we live in. But in the old covenant, they used to sacrifice a, a sheep, a sheep that was supposed to be unblemished, without spot was without wrinkle it had to be pure it didn't it could not be lame it couldn't have any defect on it and so each family would bring this 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 uh, sheep and they would slaughter it in the temple in the tabernacle and in the sins it's believed according to the um uh, to the teaching of the old covenant and according to the instructions by god those sins will be transferred to that um, um unblemished lamb unblemished, unblemished lamb now we no longer have to do that think about it for a minute we no longer have to take cows and cattle and sheep in church because Jesus Christ died on the cross for each and every one of us. That's why it's called the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God that was provided by God himself, unblemished, without sin, without spot or wrinkle, crucified on the cross for each and every one of us so that our sins then would be transferred because of the blood that he paid on the cross. All our sins are paid for because of the blood in the mighty name of Jesus. And when we come to Christ, when we believe in him, praise God, praise God, and he overcame death. He not only paid the price on the cross, he died, praise God, he died on the cross, he was buried, he rose from the dead. The spirit of God that rose him from the dead, this is where we have life in Christ, praise God. So it, it, it doesn't stop on the cross. A lot of people preach a message and as if Christ is, is still dead, he's still on the cross, he's still crucified. No, he died, praise the Son of living God. He died for each and every one of us. He paid the price with his blood. He was buried and he rose on the third day from the dead. And that is where life is, praise the Son of living God. From the cross to the, to the grave, third day, alive by the power of the spirit of a living God. Praise the son of a living God. It is the spirit of God that rose him from the dead, that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, that we receive as believers. And that's what gives us life. Because Christ lives, we live also. May God bless you abundantly if you got the revelation. So listen to this. Because it is written, be holy for I am holy. Verse 16. Be holy for I am holy. So in other words, Christ expects us to be holy. God expects us to be holy. How do we become holy? Because we are by human beings. And, uh, 
So many people say, oh, we've all seen and fallen short of the glory of God. And that is true. Romans 3 verse 20 said, we've all seen and fallen short of the glory. None of us are perfect. None of us can by ourselves be perfect. But that perfection comes from the pioneer and perfect of our faith. And that is Jesus Christ, the son of a living God. And he has given us, most importantly, the spirit of a living God, the Holy Spirit. That's why he's called the Holy Spirit. To purify us, to sanctify us, to break every demonic bondage in our hearts. To, to, to make us holy, even as God is holy. Praise the son of a living God. Praise the son of a living God. He says, because it is written, be holy for I am holy. So you cannot say that I'm, not, I'm incapable of being holy. All you have to do is submit your heart to Christ, receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, and he will purify you. And it is hard, yes. It is hard to, to live a life of, a life of uh, purity. It is uh, hard to live a, a life of uh, a sanctified life. And that's why Christ says in Mark 8, verse 34 to 38, that whoever wants to follow him, whoever wants to follow him must be ready to carry their cross yes it is going to be tough trials and tribulations christ himself went through temptations he went through trials you satan attacked him day and night satan attacked him in prayer satan attacked him in times of peace satan attacked him every minute every second that he was here on earth but guess what he overcame and because he overcame we shall also overcome who shunned the love of what a good declares in first june chapter 4 verse 4 because because he who is, is, who is in us is greater than he that is in the world. Now, because Christ overcame, we are also overcomers. Praise the Son of the living God. So, 1 Peter 1, 15 to 16 says, But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, in everything that we do. Say, think. Praise God. We must be pure and holy. Praise God. That means... Forget the filth of uh, sin and unrighteousness. Forget anything that is not of God. Sexual immorality. Anything that is not of God. Reject. Any thought, any impure thoughts from the devil. Reject. And you have the power to reject because the Holy Spirit will reveal to you what is of his and what is not of his. Praise God. That is why his word is living. The sword of the spirit, sharper than any double-edged sword, separating soul from spirit. What does that mean? That means that the spirit of God is able to let you know that which is in your soul, that is which all is of you. In other words, what you, your heart is, 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 is thinking, he will reveal it to you. And then he will separate what is of the spirit, of the spirit of God. In other words, what he wants you to do. So if your soul is struggling with the spirit, God will help you overcome the soulish desires that are fleshly the soulish desires that are not of god and bring you in line with the spirit of the living god that is the gift of the spirit of the living god thank you king of kings thank you lord of lords thank you alpha and omega thank you beginning and year for the sacrifice that you made on the cross that you now make it possible that even though we are under attack we stand firm on the word of the lord and your spirit is able to fight for each and every one of us. And we are going to be holy and blameless when you return in mind, body, and spirit. Praise the Son of the living God. First Thessalonians 5, 23. And the word of God declares, praise the Son of the living God. In Ephesians 6, 10 to 18, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual forces of darkness, principalities and powers in heavenly places. And the only way you can overcome is by the power of the Spirit of the living God. Notice what Paul says in Ephesians 6, 10 to 18. He says that we must wear the full armor of god how do you wear the full armor of god it's through the word of god wearing the helmet of salvation looking to jesus christ the author and the finish of our faith wearing the breastplate of righteousness looking again to jesus christ who is our righteousness our own righteousness the word of god declares in isaiah 56 over 6 is as filthy as rocks we must seek the righteousness that comes through christ the son of a living god having the shield of faith Praise the Son of the living God. And what a God declares, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, which is the sword of the Spirit. Again, you do need the word of God as a shield of faith. And the sword of the Spirit, he talks about it. Praise the Son of the living God. And the belt of truth, which is Jesus Christ, the only way, the truth and the life, and the shoes of peace, which come from none other than Jehovah Shalom, the Prince of Peace, Son of the living God, who died for against our sins. Praise the Son of the living God. And if you do that, you're going to overcome all the wiles of the devil, all the fiery darts of the enemy, all the snares and traps that he has arranged for you and I. They are going to, you're going to overcome them. You're going to jump, jump high. You'll be like an eagle. Isaiah 40 verse 31 proclaims that those that wait upon the Lord shall be strengthened. They shall soar on the wings like an eagle, run and not grow weary, walk or not get tired. So no matter what the devil does, he's not going to be able to wear you out because you are strengthened. 
by the word of God. You are strengthened by he who lives, he who is, was, and is to come. That is Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Praise the son of the living God. Hura bashaka taramaman diribu shakaya. Hura basa taraman diribu shakaya. In 18 it says, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things. You and I were not redeemed with corruptible things. And if you don't believe Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, if you haven't accepted him as yet, please accept him as your personal Lord and Savior. And you will be saved. Scripture says in John 3, 3, that unless you're born of water and spirit, you cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Praise God. So he says, knowing in verse 18, first Peter 1 verse 18, knowing that you are not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold. None of us were redeemed by corruptible things like silver and gold, houses and cars that people fight for on a daily basis. People kill for money. They 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 go to they they, they sell themselves, they prostitute themselves, they do all kinds of things. Wives and husbands killing each other, they lying to each other. Some of them claiming ransom on behalf of their husbands and wives. Things are going awry in the awry in this in this world. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, people killing. Can you imagine people killing others in my country? People are killing. They're killing people because of this donor. I think I might have shared it on this platform before. Because of the donation of, of organs, people are killing people, fellow human beings, to get hearts, to get um, uh, uh, to get um, uh, liver, to get uh, to get um, uh, kidneys, just so they can sell them for medical reasons. Can you imagine? You receive a kidney that has been as a result of somebody who has been killed. How bad is that? These are the things that Christ talked about. That in the last days, there will be perilous times and perilous men. People, lovers of pleasure rather than God. People that love themselves more than they love God. People that are ready to kill. Can you imagine somebody killing somebody and donating, selling, not even donating, but selling. This is not donation, by the way. They're selling these, these organs to these hospitals and, and places in Saudi Arabia. That's what I'm told. They're, they're sold. So, so, to you who's listening, brother, sister, let us pray for one another because the times that we're living in are so evil and perverse. It is this that Paul said, let us live as wise, not as foolish people. Praise God. Redeeming the time because the times that we're living in are evil. Not to be filled with wine, but to be filled with the spirit of the living God. The times that we're living in are so evil. And so in order for us to keep our clothes pure and holy, even as he who has called us is pure and holy, we must submit to the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. Be in prayer. Paul says, Praying always with all prayers and supplication for all saints in the spirit. In the spirit. That is what we need. Reading the word of God. Dedicating yourself to yourself to, to, to the things of God. That is the only way you can keep out yourself and myself, everybody, untainted from the evil and perversion in this world. Think about it for a minute. That is what's going on. So he says here, knowing that you are not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold, from your aimless... Uh, from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers. Listen to that. So there's, there's fathers and great-grandfathers. I don't know about you, but they, my great-grandfathers, they worshipped little gods and worshipped in shrines and things like that. Before I became born again, okay, I didn't know. I, I, of course, I didn't go and do those, those, those shrines or whatever. But guess what? When you become born again, you become a new creation. All things pass away. Even what your fathers and great-grandfathers worshipped. It, does, can, it has no power over you. And some of them, they were, I was a Catholic. They, was, they, they, they were Catholics and they went to Catholic church. I am not a Catholic anymore. I'm a born-again believer. And I know the difference between a born-again believer and a, a traditional Catholic person or a traditional a religious person or, or a, someone who goes to shrines and worships little gods and in, and in shrines and in huts and things like that where they worship little gods. I know the difference. Now, I've never been to a shrine. I've never been there, but I know about them. So, so what he's saying here, the word of God is saying is that, that knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, all these things are corruptible, like silver and gold, even physical things. We are not bought by corruptible things. We are bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of living God. You, uh, from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Praise the son of the living God. 
Praise the Son of the living God. He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world. He indeed was foreordained. Listen to this word. Oh, Rabba Shikata Rabba City. I had never seen this word. I thought it was somewhere in Revelation. But listen to this. It is powerful. Before the foundation of the world, Christ was foreordained because you know why? God is, this, is, is the, the, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and Omega. So he was foreordained to die for the forgiveness of our sins before the foundations of the world because God was so that Adam and Eve would sin. And so seeing afar, he foreordained before the foundation of the world that Christ would die for you and I. Praise the Son of the living God. This has made me so happy. I just discovered this because I had I didn't see it here. I saw it in Revelation. I'm going to show you in, in Revelation where it is. But it's powerful. It just shows how loving our God is. It just so shows how his manifest wisdom is greater than any. Praise God. The God that we serve, praise the Son of Living God, knows your thought from beginning to the end. He knows everything that you're going to do from this day, from, from the beginning, before you were even formed in your mother's womb. What am I saying? Before you were even formed in your mother's womb. He knows it. Praise God. But even as I speak right now, he knows what you're going to think. Praise God. And yes, you've already thought whatever you thought you've gone through, whatever you've gone through. But I'm telling you that he, for, he, he knows everything that you're going to do, you're going to say, you're going to think. And so how much better for you to submit to Christ and say, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. Praise the Son of the living God. We read in the other in Psalms 139, verse uh, 14 to 17, that all the days that are ordained for us here on earth are written in the book, in the Lamb's book of life. Praise the Son of the living God. And that if we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, those days come to pass. In other words, we align with the will of God every time you make a decision that is in God, that is in agreement with God, you align with God. Praise God. And yes, we make mistakes. We fall sometimes, but when you come back, and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your loving kindness. I pray you forgive me for everything I've said, done, or thought that does not glorify your name. God realigns you with his will. In fact, he said, let us pray that the will, the, the, let, let the, the will of God be done here on earth, even as it is in heaven. In other words, you align with the will of God here on earth. Praise the Son of the living God. And the first way you can do that, the, 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 the number one first step that you can do that is through accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. But listen to this. First Peter 1 Peter 1.20. And this has excited me. It says, He indeed was foreordained. Christ was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you from the dead, praise God, and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. Praise the Son of the Living God. Praise the Son of the Living God. Thank you, Jesus. Uraba Shika Trama City. I want to take you to Revelation, the book of Revelation. Let us go to Revelation 13, and, and I show you the same scripture that um, is confirmed by this. Praise God. Now, this was talking about um, the difference of those that worship the beast. And we're going to watch out. Don't allow the beasts in triple six on your forehead and on your right hand. Worship Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God that was slain for the forgiveness of our sins. He is the only way, the truth, and the life. Never allow to worship the beast by, uh, by, by accepting to follow his ways, so accepting to, 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 to follow uh, the devil himself because he's the working of Satan. He's the working of Satan. He's under the working of Satan that the beast will come. Now, the beast himself, and that is the Antichrist, has not yet been revealed, but he will soon be revealed. But listen to these words. Let's start from uh, Revelation 13, 7 to 8. It says, it was granted to him. Now, let's start from, um, let's start from uh, verse uh, 3, okay? I'm going to start from verse 1. See. Then I stood, this is a revelation. Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name. His heads a blasphemous name. Now, the representation of uh, seven heads and the ten horns, it has, uh, 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 when you read in um, uh, biblical um, revelation, uh, the seven heads and uh, ten horns have a representation in the world that we live in today. Uh, some of them are nations. I think ten horns are uh, nations. Seven heads must be the kings. So, so read about it. Read about it. Um, and I don't want to go deep into that. But listen to this. It says, Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast, the beast himself being the Antichrist, the Antichrist, the Antichrist, the Antichrist, the Antichrist. Antichrist coming from Satan himself. Now, to be a human being, 
but he will have a beast within him. A spirit of antichrist, the spirit of uh, uh, coming from Satan himself, a spirit of disobedience and rebelliousness, a spirit that rebels against God, that hates anything to do with God. That's why it's called the antichrist, against Christ. So here he says, and on his own, ten crowns, and on his heads, a blasphemous name. So obviously, that is not good at all. So listen to two. It says, now the beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power. Now we know that the dragon is that old serpent of old called the devil. He gave him his power. It is this that Paul speaks of in Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Uh, from verse 1 to 11, if you read there, I think we read there before. Uh, praise God. So it is under the workings of Satan. Somewhere in verse 11, 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 11, it talks about uh, the, 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 the beast, or the, this Antichrist, who had a beast within him, coming under the workings of Satan. So this is the same scripture it says. The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. He gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. So in other words, he will be a power, he will have a throne, in other words, he will be a king sitting here on earth, and he will have authority, now listen to this. And I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded and his deadly wound was healed and all the world marveled and followed the beast. So in other words, there will be this uh, fictitious, uh, it will actually be a, a real, uh, not a miracle in, a, in the sense of Christ, but it will be a deceiving sign and wonder, a lying sign and wonder. And, say, and all the world marveled and followed the beast. So in other words, don't be deceived by the lying signs and wonders of this beast. So they worshipped the dragon who gave authority to the beast. So in other words, the, the purpose of Satan is for people to worship that beast, that human being will have in him that spirit of the beast coming from Satan himself, so that when they worship the beast, they are worshipping Satan himself. And listen to this. So they worshipped the dragon who gave authority to the beast, and they worshipped the beast saying, who is like the beast, who is able to make war with him? It will be a human being. It will be a human being that will come under the guise of bringing peace, bringing peace in the world. But unfortunately, it will not be the peace that surpasses all understanding. It will not be peace that comes from heaven, not the peace that Christ brings, not the peace that the Prince of Peace brings, but a peace that is human, from human wisdom, that is satanic in one way or another. Because human wisdom, if you follow human wisdom and and understanding rather than the wisdom of God, you are following Satan himself. Praise God. So he says, so, so they worshipped the dragon who gave authority to the beast. And they worshipped the beast saying, who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And he was given authority to continue for 42 months. Then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. So that's what the beast will do. That old serpent of old, uh, the devil sending the beast. So listen to this in verse 7. It was granted to him to make war with the saints. He will fight the saints of God. He will fight, fight the men and women of God. He will fight those that believe in Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. It says, it was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. So in other words, it will be a human being with this beast who have been given authority even over the saints. So saints of God, children of God, watch out. Stand firm on the word of the Lord. Do not allow that old serpent called the devil to intimidate you. Stand firm on the word of the Lord and proclaim that Jesus Christ is the only way, the truth, and the life. No other. Praise the Son of the living God. It says, and authority was given to him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. Listen to what it says in, in verse 8. All who dwell on the earth will worship him. Whose names, not everybody, but those whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb. In other words, if your name is not written in the book of life of the Lamb of God, if you're not a believer, if you do not believe in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you will worship the beast. But if you believe in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you will not worship the beast. This and this is, this, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb, they will worship the beast. But... What the point I was making here, that the Lamb, the, the, the Lamb of God was killed and slain from the foundation of the world. The same scripture that we just shared in First Peter chapter 1, I believe, verse 21. Praise God. Verse, verse, uh, chapter 1, verse, uh, First Peter chapter 1, verse 21. Who through him, and it says here, what, what do we say? 
Um, he indeed was foreordained, verse 20, foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. So he says, and all who dwell on the earth will worship him, him being the beast, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb, killed, slain from the foundation of the world. Okay? Listen to those words. Whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. So in other words, Christ was slain from the foundation of the world. In other words, he, before it even happened, it was already ordained by God that he will come to pass. And lo and behold, it came to pass. But we who believe in Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, we have eternal salvation through Christ. That no matter what the devil does, how do we overcome? Revelation 12, 11 says, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives even unto death. So even to the point of death, when the enemy says that I'm going to kill you, when, when the Antichrist comes and says I'm going to kill you, just do not say no to Christ. Just say, in the mighty name of Jesus, if you want to kill me, kill me. I believe in Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. My light and my salvation is my Lord and my Savior. He is the only way, the truth, and the life. Praise the Son of the living God. 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 Let us go to 2 Corinthians. 7 Corinthians. The book of 2 Corinthians. If you have your Bibles, please. Uh, verse, uh, chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. I meant to read that yesterday as we were studying, but I didn't have a chance. Um, but if you have your Bible, Second Corinthians, chapter 11, I'm going to read from verse 1 to 4. Thank you, Lord. So it says here, oh, that you would bear with me in a, a little folly and indeed... You do bear with me. This is Paul speaking to the church in Corinth. For I am jealous for you with godly jealousy. For I have betrothed you to one husband. Now, this is talking about uh, the same topic that we were studying uh, yesterday. Praise the Son of Living God. About um, God having chosen his church as a bride. So we're continuing. How are we supposed to be holy? The bride, as we learned, is supposed to be pure and holy. It's supposed to be unblemished because he's coming back for a holy and unblemished church according to the word of God in Second Peter 3.14. So in a similar way, um, uh, Paul here is explaining to the church in Corinth uh, that uh, uh, they are supposed to be pure and holy. Listen to this. He says, for I am jealous for you with godly jealousy. For I have betrothed you to one husband that I may present you as a chest virgin of Christ. A chest virgin of Christ meaning we must be pure and holy. Praise God. He says in verse 3, but I fear lest somehow, as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness. So, uh, the old serpent called the devil is, is a, a deceiver of all nations, even as he's going to deceive many. Uh, he deceived Eve and, and Adam, and they disobeyed God. So that's the origin, the origin of disobedience and rebelliousness in men. In these last days, um, according to the word of God in Second uh, Timothy chapter uh, 3, we learned that in the last days, many will be lovers of themselves, will be lovers of pleasure rather than God, have a form of godliness, denying the power of God, children being disobedient to their parents. So many things are going to happen. And that rebelliousness, that disobedient spirit, that spirit of the God, that stiff nakedness that detests anything to do with God is from Satan himself, that old serpent of old called the devil, the dragon, who is going to be sending the Antichrist in these last days to try and deceive many. Listen to this. But I fear, lest somehow, as the serpent deceived Eve by his corruptness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. So, yes, the things of Christ may look simple to people. Somebody talks about dying on the cross and that Jesus Christ died on the cross and his blood paid the price for each and every one of our sins and that he who was sinless took on our sin. The very mention of the Lamb of God when uh, in human, uh, human mind we know that Christ is, was a human being, not a lamb. Some people may look at that as something that is so simplistic, something that is not, that is actually foolish. In fact, in what God says that uh, the foolishness of, of God is wisdom to those that believe. But to those that do not believe, it is, of course, foolishness. So foolishness meaning that the things of God may look foolish and, and 
they may not look, uh, they'll sound intelligent in the humanistic world. But in the realm of the spirit, I'm here to tell you, brother, sister, that is where the power is. There is power in the blood of Jesus. There is deliverance in the blood of Jesus. There is supernatural healing in the blood of Jesus. Jesus Christ was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his strength. Good afternoon. So continuing with our study, I'm sorry you got knocked off, uh, but I will connect this, uh, these two uh, pieces, the enemy fighting. Uh, but we are standing firm on the word of the Lord, the promises of he that sent us. Praise the son of a living God. So going back to our scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1 to 4, it says, but I fear lest somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. In other words, the things of Christ being simple to those that are in the world and then looking somewhat foolish, Paul speaking in the uh, scripture elsewhere, that the foolishness of God is the wisdom for those that believe. It's the wisdom of the cross. Praise the Son of a living God. Pray there is power, I say, in the blood of Jesus. There's deliverance in the blood of Jesus. There's supernatural healing in the blood of Jesus. That's why it is said in Isaiah 53, verse 5 to 6, Praise the Son of the living God, that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes, we are healed in the name of Jesus. We all are like sheep that have gone astray in need of a shepherd for each and every one of our souls. May God bless you abundantly. We get the revelation. In verse 4, he says, For if he who comes preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive a different spirit which you have not received or a different gospel which you have not accepted you may well put up with it what have we received who have we received we have received christ the son of the living god when we accepted him as a personal lord and savior and he gave us the gift of the spirit of the living god and by the spirit we testify that jesus christ is the son of the living god who died for forgiveness of our sins the only way the truth and the life and only through him can we attain eternal salvation eternal life Praise the Son of the living God. For the gift of righteousness is eternal life through Christ. Now the thief, that old serpent called the devil, that dragon, he came to steal, kill, and destroy, but the Lord came to give us life and give it to us more abundantly. Praise the Son of the living God. We refuse to succumb to the words of the devil. We stand firm on the word of the Lord and proclaim that he who was, is, and is to come he is coming back soon. He is coming back for a holy and unblemished church. And I pray in the name of Jesus that he finds us pure and holy, even as he is pure and holy. Praise the Son of the living God. Our hearts and souls, we submit to him with no doubt that he is coming back. Now, listen to this. Jeremiah, I'm going to take you to Jeremiah 31, verse 31 to 34. And you will understand what Jesus Christ did and according to the promise in the book of Jeremiah by God. Praise God. Way before... God promised. You see, the, the, the spirit of uh, the, the, the testament of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy. These things were prophesied way before time. We just read in scripture that before the foundation of the world, it was ordained that Christ would die. In in um, uh, here in eleven verse, uh, I think it was First Peter chapter one verse twenty, and in Revelation thirteen verse eight. Praise the Son of Living God. And so, Jeremiah thirty one verse thirty one to thirty four. Listen to what he says. Praise God. The word of God declares here. It says, Behold, and this was God speaking through Jeremiah, a man who was ordained by God to be a prophet for all nations. God having seen him even before he was formed in his mother's womb, even as he's seen each and every one of us before we we're formed in our mother's womb, and ordaining him a prophet of nations. Listen to the words that he put in his mouth. These are the words. It says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. And with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke, though I was a husband to them, says the Lord. So in other words, what Christ is saying, that old covenant, okay, in which, of course, God was their husband, praise God, this whole analogy of a husband and wife started even way back in the uh, Old Testament. In the New Testament, we know that the bridegroom is Christ and, and, and we are the bride. Praise the Son of the living God. Now, the covenant 
was broken that they you know in, in, in the old testament the old covenant was broken was broken by the children of israel under the law of moses they were unable to uh, stay out of sin they kept on sinning in fact it is this that paul speaks of um, as, as um, having brought the sting of sin the, 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 the being strengthened by uh, the, the, the the law the law strengthened uh, sin brought uh, the, the, the sting of sin praise the son of living god now in christ under the law of the spirit we can overcome the sin. Sin no longer has dominion over us. Praise God. When you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you become dead to sin and alive in Christ because of what Christ did on the cross. Praise the Son of the living God. Praise the Son of the living God. So 31 says, verse 31, uh, chapter 31, verse 31 to 34 says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke, though I was a husband to them, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. Now he's talking about Israel. Yes. The, the, the gospel of Christ was to the Jew first and then to the rest of the world. But it was entirely for the entire world. Now, whoever accepts Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior becomes a part of a holy nation, the chosen generation, the royal priesthood in that holy nation, the new Jerusalem to come. The, 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 even right now, when you make a decision, you partake of that new Jerusalem. The, we, we read scripture yesterday that speaks to that new Jerusalem, the new Israel. Now, not the physical Israel. We're not talking about the physical Israel. We're talking about the e spiritual Israel the spiritual israel praise the son of a living god i think paul spoke about it yesterday when we uh, read the scriptures praise god and so this is the covenant he's talking about and that covenant is sealed by the blood of jesus praise the son of a living god so he says but this is the covenant that i will make with the house of israel after those days says the lord i will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts and i will be their god and they shall be my people Praise the Son of the Living God. Now, everybody, Jew and Gentile, that believes in Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, to the Jew first, in other words, to those who are the, the house of Israel, the house of Israel, the physical house of Israel, praise God, those that have a heritage from Israel, once they accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, all the Jews, all the, the, the people in, the, uh, in Israel who are scattered everywhere, that's what he was saying. We, if you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, together with everybody else, because Christ came through Israel, praise God, he died for each and every one, not just Israel, but all nations. It was a blessing to all nations. It was the promise to Abraham for all nations. And I think we shared scripture in the past uh, series to that effect that shows that it was for everybody. To, to the Jew first, of course, he had to come through the Jews. Praise God. And we bless all the Jews, but we pray that they become born again and Israel shall be saved. Praise God. That all may be saved. Today we hear the gospel because of what uh, the, 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 the obedient sons of God and children of God, women of God, did and, and they followed the spirit of God and wrote these scriptures inspired by the Holy Spirit and now all of us are born again. Paul was obedient. Peter was obedient. All the, 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 the gospels are, were written by the people from Israel, Jews, praise God, that had turned and followed Christ, praise God. And every Israelite, God wants to become born again, just like every human being on earth. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that none may perish, but that we all come to eternal salvation. He does not desire that we perish, but that we come to full repentance. Praise the Son of the God. So he says here, No more shall every man teach his neighbor, in verse 34, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they all shall know me. From the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity, and their sin I will remember no more. That's what happens when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Your sins and iniquities are forgiven. They are remembered no more. How beautiful is that? That is what Christ did on the cross. The Lamb of God that was slain for forgiveness of our sins. That is the price that he paid for each and every one of us. That whoever believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life which comes through him. Our righteousness comes from God through Christ. Praise the Son of the living God. But those that reject him, unfortunately, there is condemnation, and that condemnation coming to the very end. I mean, everybody that rejects him, even right now, they are condemned. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of righteousness is eternal life through Christ, the Son of the living God. Praise the Son of the living God. Let us go, if you will, uh, to um, 
Uh, Isaiah 61. I wanted to share Isaiah 61. Uh, just to show you that some of these things, they, 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 they point to, uh, to what Christ was already uh, talking, or he's, he's talking about in the New Testament. Praise God. Isaiah 61. As a matter of fact, one of his very first um, uh, summons, his summons in the synagogue, uh, came from Isaiah 61. He quoted 61 verse 1 to, I think, 1 to uh, 2. It says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the openings of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable Yah of the Lord. And he did exactly that. He was wounded for transgressions, bruised for iniquities, and the chest time of peace was upon him. By his stripes, we receive that healing. We are set free. When you hear that truth, Praise the Son of the God, John 8, verse 32. You shall know the truth, and the tr truth shall set you free. Praise the Son of the living God. And for whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Praise the Son of the living God. Praise the Son of the living God. And that is the truth. And that is what Christ came to, de to do for each and every one of us, that we may be set free. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, the Word of God declares, Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, there is freedom. In other words, our freedom is through the Spirit of the living God, the Spirit of the living God being given as a gift because of accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You and I, when we do, we receive the gift of the Spirit of the living God. It is this that Christ said in John 7, verse 38, I may have said it earlier, that whoever believes in him, out of an innermost being shall flow rivers of living water, which is or who is the spirit of the living God. Praise the Son of the Living God. He's a person, a person. Praise the Son of the Living God that helps us overcome every trial and tribulation, every temptation. But listen to these words that speak to a bridegroom and, and, and a bride, and, and it speaks of what we ought to be as born again believers. He says, I will greatly rejoice. Praise the Son of the Living God. And this is um, um, Jeremiah. Um, of course, speaking of uh, um, the, the words that he had received from God, he says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. Listen to those powerful words. The garments of salvation coming from Christ himself. This is Isaiah 61 verse 10. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. Praise the Son of the God. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. That righteousness that comes from Christ himself, our righteousness. Praise the son of living God as a bridegroom listen to those words as a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels for as the earth brings forth its bird as the garden praise God the things that are sown in it to spring forth so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise spring forth before all the nations listen to those powerful words it is not to any one nation just one nation but all nations christ died for all nations he died that each and every one of us should have salvation and that we should wear the robe of righteousness the garment of salvation my lord my god i thank you the garment of salvation coming from christ himself the helmet of salvation the breastplate of righteousness the sword of Ushakaya, the sword of the spirit the shield of faith the belt of fruit and the shoes of peace that paul speaks of in ephesians 6 10 to 18. they echo these words that are in isaiah 61 verse 10 to 11. may god bless you abundantly if you have um, uh, received that revelation praise the son of the living god praise the son of the living god praise the son of the living god i want to take you to matthew 25 why am i taking you um back and forth to this scripture i'm pointing to what we read yesterday about the bride the bride and, and the need for the bride to be found pure and holy because he was called as his holy and is coming back for a holy and i'm blemish church in the book of matthew 25 let's go to matthew 25 and may have shared this earlier but um I'm going to go there uh, one more time so that you understand um, the days that we're living in and what Christ expects of each and every one of us. Praise God. Praise this son of living. And in these very, very last days, the perilous times, um, we must be watchful. We must watch. We must uh, um, look to our, the bridegroom. We must look to Christ, in other words, the son of a living God, so that he may find us holy and unblemished. So that he may find us doing the work that he has called us to do, to be the salt and light of the world that he has called us to be. Praise the Son of living God. Praise the Son of living God. The only way you can do that is if you have the Spirit of a living God 
in you. Praise the Son of the living God. So he says in Matthew 25, and this is the parable of the wise and the foolish virgins. And listen to these words. The parable of the wise and foolish virgins, it talks about uh, the need for us to be found pure and holy. It is something that is spiritual, not, not physical. Of course, he uses virgins, uh, which we know uh, means someone who has not uh, um, uh, slept with any man and, and any man that seeks to marry anybody does not want to have someone who has committed fornication now that is in the physical in the realm of the spirit it is spiritual the word of god here is is is, is the parable of the wise and the foolish virgins is meant to show us that we must be spiritually virgin untainted we must not in other words submit our hearts to idolatry any kind of idolatry and yes it may be through sexual immorality fornication and uh, 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 any kind of promiscuity uh, selling our bodies to others and, and our souls to Satan promiscuity in the sense of the spiritual realm and yes it may manifest in the physical stealing lying and all those kinds of things drunkenness, homosexuality, I mean, I'm talking about adultery, I'm talking about lesbianism, I'm talking about uh, hatred, I'm talking about racism, name it, sorcery, anything that is not of God. He's talking about those things. And listen to this parable. He says, then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins. Now, he picks out ten virgins and he's going to give an example of the foolish and the wise virgins. And he says, who took their lamps, and these ten virgins, took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now, five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took uh, no oil with them. Listen to this. Those who were foolish took no oil with them. And, and so many people have an interpretation of what they all represent. I like to think that they all represent the anointing of God, the anointing of the Spirit of a living God, which we all need in order to live in this world. For those that are led by the Spirit of a living God are the children of God, as it is written in Romans 8, 14. Praise the Son of a living God. He says here, but the wise took oil in their vessels. In other words, these who were wise, the virgins were wise, they knew that they would need their lamps. They knew that they would need their lime, the, the, the oil in order, it's not enough for you to, to hold the lamp without the oil. The oil is what lights up the lamp. So they wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. Now, this speaks of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Some, even as we read in, I believe it was First Peter chapter 2, who were saying the law is slack in fulfilling his promise of coming back and the day of the Lord is, is from the times of creation. They were saying that the day of the Lord has been talked about, but we don't see that promise. Where is the Lord that they are promising uh, to come? But I'm here to tell you, brother, sister, that he's coming back soon. We read scripture in 2 Peter 3 verse 10 that says that he's coming back like a thief in the night. Revelation 16 15 confirming that he's coming back like a thief in the night. Elsewhere in Revelation is saying, I'm coming back quickly. As a matter of fact, in Revelation chapter 3, I think it talks about him coming back quickly to one of the churches. And that if we do not, and the churches, even though he was speaking to one specific church, all the church today is, is being warned that we need to be ready when he returns. Otherwise, that lamp would be moved away from that church. Listen to this. He says, but while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, uh, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. Now, of course, he's talking about buying here. Because we do not buy the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is freely given, freely taken, freely given because... You accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and you receive the gift of the Spirit of the Living God. So this was just meant to say that uh, to, to tell them that it is too late. It is too late. Of course, it, it, if it is too late, if the trumpet sounds when the Lord comes back, the trumpet has sounded. The angels are in heaven. You ought to be ready. You and I ought to be ready. That is the the, the gist of the teaching here in this parable. Praise God. Not to say that you can buy the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit cannot be bought. It's freely given. Praise God. 
How do you buy though the, the Holy Spirit? Revelation 3, verse 18, the word of God declares, Seek gold from me that has been tested by fire, that you may be rich. So, in other words, there's a certain kind of buying, the, but the buying is not uh, as in the, the human buying, the, the, the worldly buying. The buying is you redeeming your time in Christ, is you giving yourself unto the things of God, saying no to worldly things. So that is the kind of buying. Yes, it is free of charge and freely taken, but you must commit your time. Praise God. You must commit your faith in God. In other words, you must submit your heart to Christ. Praise the Son of living God. And yes, there's a price to pay. The price to pay is saying no to the evil. Praise God. Saying no to evil and perversion. Praise God. In the book of Ephesians 6, uh, 5, verse 16 to 18, let us go there for a minute so that you understand what um, this uh, is talking about. Praise God. Ephesians 5, 16. As a matter of fact, let's start from Ephesians 5, uh, 15. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, coincidentally, it talks about uh, walking in wisdom, the wisdom of God, which is freely given. James 1, 5 says, If any lack wisdom, let them ask of the Lord who gives freely without finding fault. It is free of church. But you must commit, you must come to, to the grace, which is freely given, by faith. And yes, the price to pay, praise God, even though the gift itself is freely given, the price to pay is to say no to the worldly, worldly life, to the sins, the, the pleasure of sin, to, to any unrighteousness, and say no to that, and then partake of that which has been freely given, which is through Christ, the Son of living God. He says, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, praise the son of the living God. So like the foolish virgins and the wise virgins, listen to uh, the, 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 the correlation, the, I don't know what, what to use here. It says here, see then that you walk circumspectly, circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. There is just a, a very strong, strong, strong res, uh, resemblance to what, the Matthew 25 is talking about, praise God, to what Paul here is saying. He said, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Praise God. And listen to what he says in verse 16. And this is where you will get the message. He says, redeeming the time, redeeming the times, which means that you must redeem the time. You must, in other words, give your time to the things of God, say no to the things of the devil. And many of us, I wasted a whole lot of time drinking. I wasted a whole lot of time doing things that were not of God, going to bars and going to clubs and dancing and, you know, giving my time to Satan for 40 years. 40 years. Well, of course, not from the very beginning, but I started around maybe uh, from uh, uh, from uh, from the age of uh, maybe 15 even, when I started drinking. Can you imagine? In, 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 in my whole time between the 15 and 40 years before I became born again, I was living a life of sin. I was living a life of sin. Even in the, before that, because the scripture says we are born in sin. In, in uh, mother's wombs we are formed, but we are born into a sinful world. So we are born into a sin. But when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, God saves you from that perversion, from that uh, evil and perverse generation. So listen to this. It says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Praise the Son of the living God. He says, and do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Spirit being covered of S. Praise God. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. And this is from Paul, speaking of the times that we were living in, but which speak to us even today, that we need to redeem the time because the days are evil. Not being unwise like the foolish virgins, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. In other words, seeking the wisdom of God, the wisdom of the cross, the wisdom of Christ dying on the cross and having rose, risen from the dead, buried, risen from the dead, and sit at the right hand of God and coming back to judge the living and the dead. Praise God. In that, we must submit our hearts to him in order for us to be able to overcome. Praise the son of the living God. So going back to Matthew 25, in verse 6, it says, at midnight, a cry was heard. 
Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. The time had come, and uh, speaking of Christ, because he's a bridegroom in this uh, parable, and he was speaking to these people and warning us even today that he's going to come back like a thief in the night. He says, and at midnight, a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Trumpet sounds, the, the, uh, the angels uh, sound the trumpets, and lo and behold, Christ comes on the white horse. But the question is, are you ready? Are you and I ready when he returns? It says, then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And, uh, and, and the foolish ones said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered saying, no less there should not be enough for us and you. But go rather to those who sell and buy for you. So now, of course, the time had run out for them to go out and redeem their time. That is the message why I brought Ephesians 5, 16 to 18. Praise God. So in other words, it is not the buying as in the, 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 the buying which is which we know in the world, but the buying in the realm of the spirit, praise God, which is again is freely given when you submit your heart to the spirit of the living God. You are redeeming your time. Praise the son of the living God. So he says, and while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. In other words, he was camping or looking for oil in it. And in, 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 while they went to buy, listen to what happens. Because already it was too late. And those who were ready went in with him to the wedding. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. And those words are powerful. Those words are powerful. He's speaking of Jesus Christ coming back. He's speaking of Jesus Christ returning. Returning in these very last days, we know that he's about to come. We must be ready. We must be watchful. We must be watchful. Let me finish this parable. It says in verse 11, Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. In other words, you will come, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, to the door and say, Lord, Lord, open for us. Listen to what he says. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming praise the son of the living god and these words are to you who's listening christ is coming back very soon and yes there are those who say oh i've been doing the work of god i am doing the work of god right now but even i these words are speaking to me right now even though i accept jesus Christ as my personal lord and savior and i'm doing the work that he has called me to do to preach the gospel praise god he wants me to be pure and holy so it is to you and i to to you who is listening and i he wants us to be pure and holy praise god from the core of our hearts praise the son of the living god from the deep deepest core of our hearts in other words any thoughts anything that are not of god submit to him praise god he the, in fact elsewhere in the scripture it says uh, the people will say lord lord i cast out demons and i, I prayed for the sick and i did all these things for you listen to those words but he will say i do not know you i do not know you so it's not about signs and wonders. It's not about you being able to do and teach even as I'm teaching. It is about the purity of heart. Matthew 5, 8, the water, 5, 8, the water of God declares, Blessed are those with a pure heart, for they shall see God. So the word of God then declares in 1 Peter 1, 16, that be holy because I am holy as we read. And he wants us to be holy. He's coming back for holy and I'm blemished church. And the only way we can be pure and holy, I'm going to repeat this, is through the power of the Holy Spirit who purifies our hearts. Praise the Son of the living God. That is the watchful servant. That is the, 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 the wise virgin who watches. It says, watch therefore, verse 13, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Nobody knows the time. Nobody knows the hour. Scripture says he'll come back like a thief in the night. The question is, are you ready when he returns? And my, my, my world teaching today is to prepare the bride, to prepare each and every one of us, to prepare his wise virgins, uh, to, to get into the anointing, to, to call upon the Holy Spirit, to, to call upon Christ. For those of you who have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, please do, because it is, he is the only way that truth and life, and he, he is the only one that can get us to, um, to the kingdom of heaven. Unless one is born of water and spirit, they cannot make it to the kingdom of heaven. Praise the Son of the living God. That is our scripture today, um, and I'm hoping that uh, uh, you have got the revelation. Tomorrow we're going to uh, learn a little bit more, praise God, a little bit more in the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 1 to 21. Uh, so please brace yourself up. Uh, but that is the scripture for today.
That is the scripture today. Many will say, he said, Many will say, many will say, I, 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 Lord, Lord, I did this for you. Lord, I cast out demons. And yes, you may have cast out demons in the name of Jesus. And yes, you may have done so many things for Christ. But the most important thing is, is your heart holy? Are you pure and holy? Blessed are those who are pure, uh, for they shall see God. As a matter of fact, let me share scripture uh, with you in Hebrews uh, chapter 12. I may have shared it earlier. Hebrews chapter 12, praise God. Please open your Bibles in Hebrews chapter 12, uh, verse 14. This scripture keeps coming back at me uh, because I know that there's somebody that is going to be saved. Hebrews chapter uh, 12, let us start from uh, uh, verse 14. 14 is this, the, the verse that I wanted. It says, Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which none, no one, which without which no one will see the Lord. In other words, you and I must pursue peace with all people now the peace that he's talking about is not uh, the athlete peace it's not uh, the, the peace of uh, uh, you know the, the, the athlete peace but the peace that comes from god himself praise god it is this that paul spoke of in philippians 4 7 to 8 the peace that surpasses all understanding praise god so he says pursue peace with all people in holiness there's not the stressing of the holiness without which no one will see the lord that is the bride that cried Christ is coming back for. Praise God. That is the holy and unblemished church that Christ is coming back for. Praise God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let's go to Philippians 4, verse 7 to 8. Praise God. And please don't be anxious. Don't worry. If we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior and submit our hearts to Him, we are going to be able to make it in this world and we'll make it to in the world to come, in the, in the, in the life to come. I don't want to call it the world to come, but in the life to come. Praise God. And yes, there will be a new earth and a new heaven, as we read yesterday. Praise God. But we must make the decision right now. Make the decision right now. Philippians uh, 4, verse 7 to 8. What does Philippians 4, verse 7 to 8 it says? So let's start from verse 6. It says, let's start from verse 5. Verse 2, let's start uh, uh, Philippians uh, 4, uh, verse 2. I implore Yodia and I implore Syntyche to be of the same mind of the Lord. Now, he was, Paul, of course, was speaking to the chat in Philippia. Um, uh, Philippi, I think it's called, praise God, to uh, people that were divided within the church. And today we have so many divisions. People that were divided based on, uh, oh, I believe in this person. They, they were divided based on, uh, oh, I believe in uh, this leader and this leader, this leader. You know, they, they were not looking to Christ. They were not looking to Christ, who we're supposed to be following. They were looking to human beings. Again, wisdom of human beings. And, and it's not bad to follow your pastor. Because as a pastor, if they are holy, if they are follow, if following the Holy Spirit, praise God, they will lead people to Christ. That is the purpose of a pastor. That's the purpose. The purpose of a prophet is to, to hear from God and speak to, to the people of God, praise God, to born again believers. In other words, they may know that which is the will of God, praise God. Apostles, evangelists, all these, the fivefold ministry is for a purpose. It was given to us by God for a specific purpose. Praise God. So it says, I implore you, and I implore Sintic to be of one same mind in the Lord. Listen to what he says. Paul is speaking and saying that we should all be of one same mind. Even today, praise God, the mind which is the mind of Christ. And listen to what he says. And I urge you also, true companion, help these women who labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. So in other words, if you have the mind of Christ, and if you believe her, you should have the mind of Christ. Anytime there's a deviation from the mind of Christ, then there's some other spirit that has crept in, some other demonic force of darkness that has crept in. So he says, rejoice in the Lord always, verse 4. Again, I will say rejoice, praise God. Let your gentleness be known to all men. In other words, you must submit, praise God, with humility. Be gentle, in other words, to everybody. The Lord is at hand. He says, be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer listen to what he says be anxious for nothing don't be anxious but in with all prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to god praise god in verse 7 it says and peace of god and the peace of god which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through christ jesus praise the son of living god listen to verse 8 and this is where uh, uh uh, of course, you have a piece of puzzle on it, but these are some some very specific things that we, sh as believers, should meditate on. It says in verse eight. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, in other words, anything that is true, 
Whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, praise God, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Those are the things that we need to meditate on. Don't meditate on killing somebody. In the courts of law, you sometimes hear people are premeditated murder. They meditated on killing somebody. People killing and shooting each other in malls and, and evil in the world. Muslims, Al-Qaeda, Al-Shabaab, and people planning to just wipe out people. And, and so here he's saying, for the born-again believer, as born again believers, we should pray for those people to become born again. Muslims, Hindus, Buddhists, everybody that is not a born again believer should come to know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. And these are the things they will meditate on if they are in Christ. He says, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, even when you are born again believer, you may struggle in these things. Praise God. So he's talking to you who is a believer. If you're not a believer yet, please accept this because as your pastor, Lord is saving. So, but as a believer, you should meditate on things that are noble, things that are just, things that are pure, not gossip, not hating one another, not planning to kill, to backstab even within the church. And this is what was happening in the church uh, amongst uh, the believers in Philippi. And they were, you know, backstabbing one another and they were saying, oh, I'm following this. I'm following. He's saying, have a mind of Christ and a mind of Christ where the Spirit of the Lord is, is liberty. The mind of Christ is supposed to be pure and holy. Praise the Son of the living God. He says, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy in God, in the kingdom of God, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Praise the Son of the living God. So in other words, the peace that we're talking about here was not the peace that comes from the devil, which which is his disciple. And we know that that peace that comes from the devil with a peace uh, where, in fact, elsewhere in the scripture, I think in Matthew 24, uh, um, Second Thessalonians chapter 2, they talk about when they say uh, uh, the, the peace and stability, then sudden destruction will come upon them. In fact, it is in Matthew 24, I believe. So we're not talking about the earthly peace, whereby you kill another, you wipe out a nation, you wipe out people in order for you to keep your own peace. That is not the peace that he's talking about, a peace of hatred. Peace, of course, it is not peace where you're killing another in order for you to protect your own, to protect your own. That is not peace. God does not desire that any person, does not desire that any be killed. He said, in fact, he said, when one slaps you, turn the other cheek. And I know that it is very hard, but yet that is exactly what he did for us. He laid down his life for each and every one of us. He laid it down for each and every one of us, and he expects us to lay down our lives for others. Praise God. Praise the Son of the living God. It says, the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Praise God. Praise the Son of the living God. Now we're going through the peace process between North Korea and, 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 and the U.S. Uh, peace pact and all that. And, and, and then I upload all that. And I upload all that. I pray that the Holy Spirit deals with the leaders in this country today. Praise God. In this world today that we live in. I pray that the Holy Spirit deals with each and every one of us. Praise God. That the peace that we seek may not just be the earthly peace. In which uh, is a short term, you know, uh, this I believe we claim for disarmament and, and, and denuclearization, as they say. But we have a peace that surpasses all understanding, which comes from Christ Himself. And that comes through accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. May God bless you abundantly with those words. So I'm going to close with a word of prayer. Praise God. With a word of prayer. And I pray that. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our God, the only true God, praise the Son of the living God, will help us overcome. Actually, I had one other scripture to share with you, Isaiah 5, verse 20, um, which I wrote down here. I jotted it down. Uh, Isaiah 5, 20. Yeah, it talks about calling evil good and good evil. And, and we're seeing it in these days. There are people that call uh, evil good and good evil. In the last days, it's talked about in scripture that um, there'll be a... a, a there will be uh, wisdom. Though. There will be wisdom. Wisdom shall grow. Now, wisdom, of course, sometimes has some um, misgivings. Uh, sometimes wisdom may not necessarily be uh, wisdom that builds the kingdom of heaven, rather breaks the kingdom of heaven. And so in these days, there will be people that call evil good and good evil. Things that are not of the kingdom of God are called uh, good. And yet, 
uh, those that are of the kingdom of God are called evil. And that's why it is very easy, even as it was in the days of Jesus Christ, for people who are born again to be called evil. Christ himself was called evil. The, the Pharisees, the men of religion, they, they said, oh, he casts out demons with uh, uh, the chief of demons, Beelzebub. And, and, and Christ was the son of God. They did not recognize him. And so even in these days, things that are of God may be mistaken for things that are not of God. And things that are of God may be mistaken for things that are not of God. Things that are not of God may be mistaken for things of God. And things that are not of God, uh, that are of God, may be mistaken for things that are not of God. Isaiah 55, rather 5 verse 20. Let us read Isaiah 5 verse 20. That's why we have to watch out. That's why we need the Holy Spirit to reveal to us uh, the truth. Isaiah 5 verse 20 says, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. What does that mean? Now we know that Christ died that we may have light, that, that we may have uh, the gift of the spirit of living, that we may all be born again and we may be saved from the wrath to come, that we may have eternal salvation, not perish, but have eternal salvation. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that none may perish, but that we may have eternal salvation. But today, the light of the gospel is mistaken for evil. In other words, everybody that says things that are good, we are uh, uh, thrown out and castigated as evil. When you talk about sin and, and want people to become born again, when you talk about um, things like homosexuality, you, you, you talk about uh, any uh, form of sexual immorality, adultery, fornication, nobody wants to hear the message. But yet, God has given us that message as born again believers. And that message is that he's coming back for a holy and unblemished church. He wants us to be pure and holy. And the only way you can be pure and holy is through Christ. It's still believing him and as your personal Lord and Savior. And when you do, the light comes into your heart and, and you walk holy. Even as he, he who has called us is holy. So listen to this. He said, what are those who call evil good and good evil? Who put darkness for light and light for darkness? Who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter? The word of God declares that Satan is a masquerader. He will come masquerading as an angel of light while he himself of course, we know he's an angel of darkness. And that's why he was cast out from heaven like lightning. Like lightning, he was thrown from heaven, Christ tells us. Praise God. And now we need brother, sister, friend, family to understand what the truth of the gospel is. The truth of the word of God. And the truth is that Jesus Christ is the only way, the truth and the life. And unless you believe in him, are born of water and spirit, you cannot see the kingdom of God. I pray that you receive that word and the message today. May God bless you abundantly. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. I honor and glorify you. I thank you for using me as a vessel to speak these words. And I know that somebody out there who's listening is being delivered even as I speak right now. I pray for the supernatural uh, work of the Holy Spirit in our hearts to purify our hearts that we may be holy even as you are holy. I pray that when you return, Christ, my Lord, my God, you find us blameless in body, soul, and spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for supernatural healing of whoever is listening right now. For you are wounded for our transgressions, Lord, bruised for our iniquities. And just the chastisement of our peace was upon you, Lord. By your stripes, we are healed. And may God bless you abundantly in the mighty name of Jesus.